welcome to a brand new series. This series, I'm building a tiny cabin off-grid in the woods. Episode 3 Where it all began What does this place spark in your imagination? What do you think of when you look at this tiny cabin? It's taken me a year since last winter when I first discovered this place to dream up and start working on this project. And now, here we are. I can't wait to turn this little kid's playhouse into the most adorable tiny cabin in the woods, off-grid, and completely self-reliant. Can you picture yourself here, waking up and looking out the second floor window to all the beautiful trees outside, feeling the warmth of the fireplace below, and the whisper of the trees outside, maybe the dollop of the occasional snowfall? Or in spring, the flowers outside have started blooming and the forest is alive with birdsong. The celebration of all the creatures who have made it through the chilly months. Melding like liquid vibrations with the raindrops on the roof above your cosy bed. Such a different shot with a different camera. My name is Flossie and this is Siren Stepfan, my tiny home on wheels. I built this van conversion myself and this series begins our adventures of converting this rundown, rodent infested, sketchy kids playhouse into the most dreamy of all off-grid tiny house cabins. I am excited to take all the skills I started learning in the van conversion and build on them, get better, improve, make art, and learn more as I take on this little building. It's a good skeleton, a frame for all my hopes and dreams of a tiny cabin in the woods to come true. I am working on a tiny house. It is off grid, out of cell phone reception. There is no electricity, it's not, no anything. I am looking towards being able to spend more time filmmaking, all my time telling stories and being creative. And I'm not there yet. I still have to work a full time job. Everything makes a difference. The thing that I'm like blown away by so far is how the community has just come and even for such a small channel y'all are supporting me and showing up as much as I feel like I can share with you and encourage you and that is makes it all worth it. The reason we're taking the floor up is because the tiles have to come out but the floor here is just uh, bent, it is curved but I want to insulate underneath it and I'm not crawling underneath so we're going to start from the bottom and work up. You are asking why did I remove the floor? Well the walls were built on top of the floor so and the blue tile we think had asbestos in it um, and it was glued to the floor, so we had to get rid of the asbestos. The reason I've done this is now I can insulate. So my first step is to be going to get some wire mesh to put those in pockets through each of the floor beams. Once we've uh, put the, that down, then we might put foam board or rock wool, probably foam board. And the reason we didn't just put a floor over top of the asbestos is this is how much headroom and maybe even less than that. So like half a foot, three quarters of a foot of headroom for me, anyone taller than me, if you put more on top of the existing floor, you lose headroom. After that recap, that brings us to where we are today. 
continuing to work on the floor, insulation, and an exciting piece of demolition. Welcome to the tiny house with no floor. The next jobs are uh, remove the edge strip around, which I couldn't get with the circular saw. That's going to be a lot of work and I'm not looking forward to it. Probably procrastinating on that job. Then I have to, actually before that, I'm going to do uh, rows of uh, wire mesh in between each of these beams in order to create pockets to hold uh, foam board insulation which I'm going to be putting in between here because I want to insulate from the floor up <sighs> but as I say that I am realizing that I also need to take this wall down and the first half of the patio floor up because I'm moving the floor up and I want to insulate the whole thing. So today I'm just gonna give one piece a go, see how it works and yeah I've never done this before. Never done this before. So I have some staplers, staples, I've got new blades for this multi-tool which is going to be amazing and you need that and wire cutters. The wire cutters are for this. This hopefully is going to be the answer to a rodent proof basement floor or floor insulation. The holes in this wire meshing are super super tiny uh, and hopefully I can secure it so that there's no gaps between the wire netting and the joins and that will secure the insulation from rodents and critters making homes in it which is really important. Like a sleeping bag, it's so bundled tight when you buy them, you never ever get them as small and as tightly bundled ever again. I have to do that like three more times. Yeah. Yes, instructions, but how do you change it? See? Whoa, bad idea, bad idea. Abort, abort, abort. What size do I want? Let's go with this medium size. Staplers are so bloody finicky. I wonder if this one's the same. Huh. I just learned how to use two staplers. Let me show you. You put the staplers in here household staplers you put the staplers there and of course it doesn't work but you put them here and then the spring holds them in oh man they really don't make the instructions for these very clear at all yes i should be wearing safety gloves i agree do I 
own any? No. Could I use my gardening gloves? Probably. Oh damn, I should go get the scissors. Because really, I want to make a envelope corner. Otherwise rodents are just going to get in the end and crawl all the way in. Like a perfect basket. We want to make it harder for them, not easier. Unfortunately, you missed a bit. I cut the corners, bent this, creased it here. I don't want to put it too high up because I've still got to remove this bit of wall yet. But I want to get this in. Because <sighs> I want a sense of achievement. So these corners have got to be right in there. Rodent proof without severe rodent dentistry. Any rodent who tries is gonna need a new set of teeth. Oh, this is looking good. I'm happy. I'm really happy with that. You just, you can't get in at all anywhere. <sighs> okay, I'm getting faster. It's coming along. If you've ever been to the gym or been a rock climber, this is gonna make my hands sore really fast. But it's the same sort of motion that that hand strengthening tool. Ugh, I don't like it very much. <sighs> Hi everybody. I have a bit of a story to tell you. Uh, as you can see, I've done some of this rodent proofing, but I haven't been able to do any work on the tiny house for the last two weeks. When I was stapling, I was using these parts of my hands, like this. Um, I woke up the next day feeling like I'd broken a bone in here. I couldn't squeeze anything I was so sore my wrists were swollen and inflamed it, it was just a really bad time so it's taken me two weeks of constant arnica and massage and acupuncture to rehabilitate my wrists and I've been a bit nervous to get back to this job I have so much to do and I have so much of this floor to finish with mesh I don't even have enough mesh to finish the job. So, it's all a bit daunting right now. I, I'm gonna try and do something different and fun to give me some energy enthusiasm and try a different method of using the stable gun so that I can still get this done. Uh, been a bit disheartening. I have so much work ahead of me and I want to be doing the fun stuff. I want to be doing the rebuilding, not the deconstruction. And I'm still so heavily in the deconstruction phase that I'm trying to see the wood for the trees, as they say. All right, let's get to it. If you're new here and just joining this tiny house build series, welcome to my teeny tiny workshop. I am going to use 
this old hammer and a good old crowbar today. Wish me luck. Let's do this. <sighs> I can't believe I only got two parts of the floor done. There's so much more to do and I don't even have enough wire to finish it. So I'm going to distract myself by removing this wall. That sounds like a great idea, right? When frustrated and disheartened, smash something. Sigh. Oh. We are making progress. I have a tiny piece of wall down and I'm pretty stoked about that. <sighs> all the trim that was around the door is out and this panel. This panel is all one sheet now and I'm gonna pause and do that another day. I am now gonna try and cut another sheet into two pieces to go into there. just trying to consciously make an effort to be kinder to my body so that I can continue doing this project but also like tiny steps if I do a little bit every day it's gonna get done rather than doing a whole ton hurting myself and then having to take a two-week two-week break so let's do it let's cut this mesh, mesh. Yeah, no, I okay I'm gonna get into it I just gotta keep taking care of my arms and hands I have done a bunch more work starting to rip out this wall because we're moving it forward and I'm doing a little bit more on rodent proofing the floor I'm wearing a newly dyed top and my newly dyed hair so I've been busy but I wanted to tell you I've taken a two-week break from the tiny house because all the stapling and stuff that I had done here was really taking attacks on my wrists I've got a ganglion cyst on my wrist and I was my, my wrist swelled up and were in a lot of pain so I just had to take a break for a bit which is why you've seen other videos in the last couple of weeks from me in the van but I'm back on the tiny house I think I'm gonna go jump in the river because I am hot and sweaty and gross. But yeah, <sighs> take care of your body so that you can keep doing the things you love, okay?
hi everybody. Um, I have not been working on the tiny house as you may have noticed from my channel because it has been over 35 degrees uh, in here which is literally too hot. Uh, so I've taken a few weeks off to get the peak of the August heat out of the way. Also the stapling really has caused me an awful lot of pain. I've already got a ganglion cyst here on my wrist. So this, I can only do a little tiny bit of that work at a time before I have to stop and like put arnica all over my hands and let them heal for a few days, which is really discouraging. But I'm slowly, slowly making progress, which is pleasing. I have two more to do. Then we're going to take down this wall and then I will do the remainder of this floor strip which will probably be maybe one and a half times what's already here unfortunately. So that's a bit of a bummer because this is a job I've been procrastinating and dreading but I'm making progress and the fun demolition of taking this wall down I'm looking forward to a lot. and. I should be picking up some insulation for the floor very soon. I hope it's going to be enough. It's a possibility it might not be. Um, that's being gifted to me, so I'm very excited about that. And um, it's going to look different with this wall moved out further. Um, but yeah, you'll see lots more tiny home videos, tiny house rebuild videos as soon as this sweltering heat is past like to give you an example it is almost 7 p.m at night and i am sweaty um so and i'm only doing a little tiny bit of work at a time to save my hands from death so that's your update cute fresh haircut. I popped into town recently just to uh, stop by the postal service and really excited I stopped by the glass store and was like hey y'all need to do my windscreen. Oh and the nice camper there. Um, last time I went there I spoke to a different person and they were like oh you need to find the gasket. Actually this windscreen is just glued on. It's not actually got a gasket. So they quoted me and I'm going to pay $800, which is a lot, um, more than I'm really excited about paying. So you better watch this video a million times and help me out for my $800 windscreen bill. Um, and unfortunately of course insurance won't cover it because I bought the van with the cracked windscreen. So it's not a accident replacement for insurance. So now I'm on my way to go past uh, a friend's place who has been building their own house, um, actual big size house, so like props to them, but they have some spare insulation left over, which I'm going to, it's foam board insulation, which I'm going to use in the floor. I am really, really hopeful that I will be able to cross fingers. We've got some free foam board insulation for the floor, which is massive and it's like good thick stuff. So no cold feet for this tiny house. We have a problem. I wanna close the roof vent, but all of these are in the way. I don't want to take these outside because they'll get wet. So I guess the roof vent is just gonna leak rain onto the kitchen bench. Oh, and that fell down. Oh, I am really happy it's raining outside. But Quack. this wasn't very well planned. <laughs> oh.
everybody. You've been like, you haven't done much in this episode. What's going on? Well, I have been sick and traveling and it was very, very hot. It has now cooled down. Summer has been like this. Would you believe it? And I have some things to update you on. I have inside of here got the insulation material kindly gifted to me by a friend uh, from their building. So it was a surplus uh, reclaimed waste material, which is super exciting. I've done more of the uh, stapling and I've half removed all the nails from this. So that almost comes off. However, instead of trying to fight with it for like several more days, because I've been fighting with this off camera, I am going to get a saw and just go, Zoop. this is not a weight bearing wall, so it's just going to come straight out. But let's check inside. Insulation! Woohoo! Right, I have three and a half sheets, which should be enough to do this whole piece out to that post. This is the whole piece that is being insulated. Um, today I have brought in my trusty batteries, and we're gonna see if I can get rid of this little lip this little blue lip around the outside of the building that's what I'm going to tackle today and then the next couple of days I'm going to come back and slice and dice this and slice and dice this bloody wall which I am so 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 sick of so sick of This for the floor, and this for the wall. This battery pack is so great. Check out the previous video if you want to know more about this Blue Eddy EB3A. It was a very generous gift. I'd be better off chopping on that side. Damn it. Last big piece of demolition. I cannot wait to show you what I have in store planned for this tiny house. So thank you so much for following along with this journey. Yes, it is messy, but it is going to be amazing once we get back into the rebuildings, finished the destruction destruction oh, I'm really happy it's taken such a lot of mental hurdles and physical hurdles with hurting my hands to get all of these work done a lot of it's happened off camera because it's been slow painful and tedious from now on it should go faster and I'm excited this is a bigger space and it looks so cool and I'm suddenly having that wall out opens up in my brain visions of how it could be rebuilt, what to rebuild it, and 
how to make it look gorgeous. I'm thrilled. Whew. Actually, there's a little bit more destruction because I'm going to have to take down these uh, little patio walls too. But for the most part, the big bits are done. subscribe button and the notification bell if you wish to see me continue this next up we're going to put insulation in the floor and put new flooring down start talking about design and layout where things will go i'm really excited for more episodes please be aware that i am doing this alongside all of my other travel and work and filming so you get a small chunk of tiny house every time i have collected enough footage to make a full episode. I'm doing it slowly alongside everything else. This is not what I'm doing full time. So you will see other episodes in, in dispersed in between. Thanks so much for being here and I love you all very much. See you next time, bye. This is gonna be an amazing space when it's finished. I plan to build it like a work of art, like an art project. I think when I bought built Siren, my step van, it was built out of necessity, built in a time frame because I needed to live in it and I had a time frame to get to living in it. So this space feels like I have the luxury of being a bit more of a perfectionist and doing a bit more artistic design, which is kind of neat. If I had a candle, I'd light it just for you so that you could see my heart is always there for you. If I had a million, they'd light the way so that you'd always know that you're never alone and we're always here for you. All of our candles together can light the flame of hope, of getting rid of stigma so we can all better cope. Perhaps someday soon, others will understand. Instead of running away from us, they'll gladly hold our hands.